Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Samirna Jean-Simon, and I'm the International Student Advisor here in Clayton County Public Schools. This is my story of empowering parents and families to engage in a high-performance culture. Clayton County Public Schools' vision is to be a district of high performance, preparing all students to lead and compete successfully in a global society. Our mission is to empower students to achieve academic and personal goals. We focus on strategic goal number three, which is to create an environment that promotes active engagement, communication, accountability, and collaboration of all stakeholders to maximize student achievement. The purpose of this study is to validate how the Title III ESL parent family classes empower participants to actively engage in their children's academic achievement. Here are some demographics of Clayton County Public Schools. As you all may know, we are fully accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges. We offer world-class program taught to pre-K um, students to 12th grade. We serve over 50,000 students in 66 schools and four educational programs. We rent <coughs> one of the highest schools in, in the District of Georgia, in the District of Georgia. Um, we want to focus on the students' population. We currently have over 12,000 students who speak a language other than English, and over 6,000 of them are counted as English language learners. Here is a pie of what the primary home language other than language um, English um, students look like. As you can see, over here, the 12,000. Right here is the uh, 6,000 flow students who are considered the ELs. International, um, the International Center was established in 2010. Can you imagine having all of these students enrolled in Clayton County Public Schools and we do nothing with the parents, empowering them and how to engage in their students' lives. So this is how the uh, Title III ESL parent and family classes were established. We started with the basic program and we continue to grow. Some of the services that the uh, International Center offers is the our staff help parents to navigate the school system in the United States, conduct student enrollment. We provide interpretation and translation services. We do parent workshops. We provide information on instructional programs and resources. And of course, we teach the English and second language to the parents. We track our visitors who come to the International Center. As you can see, I'm sorry. As you can see here, we grow every year. Here in this school year, 2018-2019, we have so far over 18,000 visitors. So what we do as we have our visitors, we promote the program. We let them know about the services we offer. We let them know about the ESL parent class. According to Kaplan and Leontas, the following barriers are involved um, that, that exist in terms of parents being involved at schools. Language barrier, trust, unsure about the value of their contributions. Some of our parents, because from a different culture, their perception is misunderstood about what is parent-teacher conference and of course, transportation. Let me bring the fact that um, in terms of the value of contribution, 
some of uh, other cultures we have is that when parents receive uh, an invitation from teachers, for example, to come and discuss the student's uh, progress, sometimes they think it's bad because of the fact that, for example, in my culture, if parents receive a note for the um, parent to visit the school, that means the student was not engaging or the student was not um, doing well academically. This is a summary of our parents um, who enrolled in the ESL um, parent classes. And um, here is the difference. In 15, 16, the blue represent basic, the green level one, the orange is level two, the red orange is level three, and then the purple is the computer literacy program. For the basic, 15, 16, there were 26 students enrolled. For level one, 49 enrolled. Level two, about 42 enrolled. And then the level three, 26 of the parents enrolled. For computer, it was 38 of them. I wanna mention, the big difference, look at 18, 19. Can you believe it? There are 58 students who, current, who enroll this year in the basic <coughs> class, 88 enroll in level one, 53 in level two, 38 in level three, 20 in level four, and the computer class, 41 of them. Now I wanna show the difference we started Remember, we started with basic back in 2010. 15, 16, we didn't have level four. We actually started with level four last year, 17, 18, okay? And there were 35, uh, 25 of them enrolled. We wanted to know the parents' perception on why do they think uh, some of their classmates stopped coming to school. So we gave a survey, and this is one of the questions we asked. And their answers are as follows. There are 30.1% stated that they find a new job. 27.9% said they have a new schedule at work. And the others, 19.1, said there were other reasons. And of course, they look, take a look at the 22.8% who stated that transportation is one of the issues. Here are some of the questions we posed as a team um, in terms of the research. How does the Title III ESL parent classes support CCPS, Clayton County Public School Strategic Goal number three? How does the preparation of instruction of um, instructors impact parent engagement? How does the Title III ESL parent classes empower participants to engage at school? Here are some of the literatures. Research shows that um, according to Montemayor, engaging parents at school is actually on administrators but it's not a difficult task. It can be accomplished. What he suggests is, if administrators find staff who are willing to visit their parents' community, visit their home, and discuss some of the students' outcome, they are engaged and be more interested to go into the schools and find out to learn the curriculum and be involved. Whereas, Henderson and Mack stated that when they gathered 30 years of research, um, they consistently, they consistently linked family involvement um, to higher student achievement, better attitude towards school, lower drop. So when those schools have a high level of parent involvement, we have less dropout that we noticed in the study. Um, and the attitude of the students are different. They are more interested in learning. And here's another study. According to Appleseed, 
The study that was published in 2018, it states that when parents are, in, are engaged in their children's school lives, students have the home support and knowledge they need, and guess what? They are constantly developing the love for learning, and uh, they're able to complete their assignments, and it's not temporary, but it's a lifelong um, situation. After we examined some research, and we wanted to go about putting a procedure in place to see how we can show improvement in parent involvement, and also the parent's outcome in the ESL parent um, um, classes. We started with collecting data and assess the instructional needs and the schedule we have. We conduct professional learning committees among the instructors. Uh, we do observation in the classroom to see if what we discuss is actually being implemented in the classes. Uh, we follow up with observations, we reassess and we do feedback. We also analyze data again and determine what the next steps will be. In terms of implementing, these are some of the discussions we had in the professional learning committee. We had applying the six pillars for teaching adult learners, strategies for teaching parents with in, uh, limited English, analyzing students' achievement data, classroom time management, old skills language development, and speaking and listening skills testing and language development. We use the Ventures program, which is a very well known, how many of you are familiar with the Ventures? It is a very well known program. It has a pre and post. It comes with a CD so that the parents can practice. It comes with the teacher's manual, student's book, and student's workbook. We also use uh, Color and Colorado Toolkit. We make reference to um, this tool in order to see about differentiated instruction especially for some of our parents who do not have the literacy skills in their own native language. We use SIA. As you know, there are eight components, and we make references to SIA in order to enhance the lessons that we implement in the classrooms. We use uh, community learners this year we know that in our society, it is very difficult to um, accommodate um, mental health in our society. And so therefore, we had the school psychologists who came and presented a mental health workshop um, on suicide prevention. We had our superintendents um, who came and provided a real talk session with our parents in the community. Uh, we had the, the director of nutrition who came to do a presentation, a workshop, where parents were engaged in all of these three workshops, asking questions, getting responses, and put their inputs. Last one, we had the Title III Parent Advisory Council so that they're aware that their inputs are important, working together with the Title III instructional um, specialists in order to improve our ESL program in the schools for their students. Result findings. This year for our mid-year activity, we visited the Clayton State University Spivey Hall where we attended the um, Atlanta Rangers concert. We had about 56 parents who attended. At the end of the school year, we had a visit a, a culminating activity at the Georgia Aquarium where we celebrated the dolphin's intelligence. And so therefore, there were 64 parents attending. Here is a picture of our media activity at Spivey Hall. It is a wonderful, wonderful hall. Um, if you ever visited there, you'll see that it's colorful. It's always a joy to be there and hear our 
Here is our group picture at the Georgia Aquarium. Let's take a look at the data that we analyzed. Here's the uh, result of, remember we did a pre and post test in order to place the students and to also monitor their progress. So for the basic class, they started with nine, okay? They can only get about um, 30 points. They started with nine, and at the end of the school year, they had 12. For the level one, they started with 14 and end up with 15. I mean, they're making progress, right? Two, uh, in the in level three, level two, they started with 20 and end up with 27. And for level three, this is the um, 30 and the actual score of 32 at the end of the school year, 16, 17. 17, 18 school year, the average preliminary scores are as follows. We had for the basic class, they started with six and end up with 10 at the end for the post. And level one, they started with 14 points and had an increase of two more points. Um, they started with 19 for level two and end up with 27. For level three, they started with 28 and end up with 29. However, level four, here it is, level four, when we started with them in 2017, 2000 school year, they started with 34 and end up with 36. This is great progress. For this school year, for basic, they started with five and end up with eight. Level one started with 13 and end up with 17. Level two was 19 and end up with 26. Level three, 28, end up with 31. Level four was 35 and end up with 37. We asked the parents, how would you rate the quality of instruction in your class? We had 67.6% who said excellent. 31.6 said good. And we had a small portion who said it was fair. We asked them, remember we're focusing on our engagement, so we asked them, um, well, how do you feel? So here's the statement, I feel comfortable and engaging and asking questions at school. 31% stated strongly agree. 29% stated agree. Um, 13, well, 22%, 22.8% said strongly agree and the rest, 13.2 um, said neutral and small portion said disagree. Here is the data for parent engagement at school. So a wise person asked me, why don't you take a look at schools around the, um, the um, I'm sorry, the international center. So I asked Unidos, the blue, the grayish blue represent Unidos Dual Language School, which is a school that one of the requirements is parent engagement. Um, Fountain Wood is the gray, and then Morrow is the purple, Morrow High School. And this school year, 62 parents were involved uh, in volunteering at school at Unidos Dual Language, Dual Language School. Um, for Fountain, about 53 of them volunteered, and for Morrow High School, 68 of them. Last school year, 22% for Unidos, I'm sorry, 22 of them, 26 of them for Fountain, and 45 at Morrow High. And 16, 17 school year, we had, um, 42 of them at Unidos, um, about 30 at Fountain, and 20 at Morrow High School. We continue with the parent engagement, and we have in 2000, this school year, about not 52, 52 of them uh, attended workshop. 23 of them attended workshop at Fountain and 50 at um, Morrow High School. 
in 17, 18 school year. We have a little draft. So at Unidos, 60 of them um, attended workshop. 13 of them attended workshop at Fountain and 50 of them attended workshop at Morrow High School. And so on from 16 and um, 2016 to 2017. Here, what some of the students have to say about their parents. the new tools work once we establish the unified 
um, um, unified strategy. We're gonna continue with the professional learning community and we will continue with our workshops. And one of the questions we asked the parents during our advisory council was what did you <coughs> experience as a, a topic in workshops? And here are the references that I've used. Infinite Campus for Demographics. We use um, RDIA, which is a research-based um, magazine that has article, educational articles. I use Waterproof. Um, the organization published educational um, articles, and then the uh, project I received. Are there any questions? Well, thank you so much. Thank you.